Today is September 5th, 2021. My name is Rodney Felton. I am a student at Baton Rouge Community College. I am enrolled in Professor Daniel Simon, History 1123 class. This is my annual history project. Again, today is September 5th, 2021. I am conducting this interview in Lake Charles, Louisiana. I am interviewing James Coley Sr., my grandfather. His birthday is September 8th, 1937. The interview is being held at 2901 General Milton Drive. First question is, what is branch of service did you serve in? What branch of service I served in? Mm -hmm. um, Army, United States Army. What was your rank? My rank was, uh, when I got drafted in 1959, it was a private. And when I retired in 1989, my rank was the command sergeant major. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I got drafted. Um, what year? I got drafted in 1959, um, November 1959. Where were you living in? Living when you were drafted? Well, when I got drafted, I was living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On North 18th Street, I'll never forget. Young bachelor, mm -hmm. had a good job during the summer and made good money during that period and uh, came home from work. I worked at a sugar refinery. Mm -hmm. And when I came home, I had a letter. <laughs> I saw this letter in the mailbox and it had an unusual heading on it the stamps and the, the, the seal of the, of the United States government and my name on it. And I didn't think about it being a letter to draft me. I got nervous then. But then I opened it and when I read it, I said, uh-oh, I'm going into the army. How old were you when you were drafted? I was 22 years old. Were you working in, were you working or you was in college? I was both. I was in college during the school year and during the summer, which was, this was the late summer month, I was working in a sugar refinery in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. making good money for a young man who was 19 and 20 years old. Were you afraid when you got drafted? No, I was not afraid. I didn't think about war, I didn't think about killing or nothing like that. I used to like to go to see war movies, but I never pictured myself being in the war. What college were you attended? I was a student at Maryland State University in Princess Anne, Maryland. I was there on a football scholarship. Mm -hmm. On a football scholarship? On a football scholarship. I had four years free college. I didn't have to pay for nothing. Nothing. Were you glad to be drafted? Personally, no, I was not because it interrupted my lifestyle. My lifestyle was a young bachelor with a job and I kept a pocket full of money with the job I had. So I saved money so when I went back to school, I'd always have money in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Where was your first duty station? My first duty station was in, um, uh, Indiana, I, I don't remember the city, but that's the one I got drafted. I had to report to some city, I forgot the name of it, I think it was Indianapolis. And I had to report there to take a series of tests they gave, the Army gave us at that time to determine where, what branch they would put us in. Infantry, Army, uh, Armor, or, um, or, uh, or Chemical. Mm -hmm. and what war did you serve in? Unfortunately, I served in the Vietnam War. Two tours, uh, June of 1968 to June of 1969, and then again from January of 1971 to uh, December 1971. What city you arrived in? What do you mean, what city I arrived at? From where? From, from the war. From when to I the came war. to war. the war? Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, when I left, San Francisco and flew over to Vietnam, I arrived in Saigon. Mm -hmm. What 
What was your job position? A platoon sergeant and an acting first sergeant because of the rank I had. Were you responsible for other soldiers? Yes, I was responsible for 30 men that went out in the field with me um, as, a, as a platoon sergeant. But then when I was back in the rear as the acting first sergeant, I was responsible for like 150, 150, maybe 155 people. Did you see combat? Yes, I did see combat. 12 months of it. Do you, did your unit suffer any casualties? Uh, yeah, the, um, I had a, 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 a recon platoon and before I, I joined them, they had gotten into a firefight and they lost some men. And then when I joined them, we got into a firefight and I lost three, three men. I had three men killed. If we killed anybody, I don't know. I saw blood trails, but I never saw any bodies. And did you see anyone die? Did I what? See anyone die? Not really, no, I didn't see one die. I had one, two die, but uh, he wasn't in, in my presence. Did anyone under your supervision die? Uh, yes, I had three men under my supervision to die. Did you see any civilian casualties? Yes, I did see civilian casualties. Men, women, and children. Tell me about your few of your most memorable experiences. Um, my most memorable experiences, well, the person I said was getting drafted in the United States Army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a shocker because when I left, I thought I was going to be able to take some tests in, 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 in Indianapolis and come back to Philadelphia, mm -hmm. but that didn't happen. I, uh, when I went to Indianapolis and they gave us a series of tests, and the sergeant says, you guys are in the Army now. And I never saw Philadelphia again. Mm -hmm. And I love Philadelphia. I love where I live in North Philadelphia. But, mm -hmm. but I never saw it again. What did you eat in combat? In combat, we had um, what was called combat rations. They, they gave us like, um, the old food was in cans and they have ham and eggs, pork and beans and franks, spaghetti and meatball, and uh, some other stuff I didn't eat. Just those three there that I just mentioned were the three that I always ate. Then they changed our rations to, um, to LERP. They call it long range patrol rations. And it was rice and meat or like beef mm -hmm. or steak or whatever. All we had to do was put water in it and put it on, under the Vietnam sun. It was just that hot. But when that sun hit that pack, those little rice grains, you see them start swelling up. Mm -hmm. They look just like grains of rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you sleep while in combat? Terrible. Real, real nervous, scared. Didn't want nothing crawling on me. Mm -hmm. um, didn't want nobody to call themselves knocking anything off of me because I had some guys who had machetes and they would swing and cut in at anything and try to kill anything. And so I didn't want one of them to get excited to see something crawling on me and call themselves cutting it off me. Um, I saw, I thought it was some tigers, I'm not sure. We were pretty close. My point man saw a king cobra. Mm -hmm. It reared up on him, but he wasn't close enough to get the, for the snake to strike him, but just looked at him and then he was, frightened to the point where he just stood there and then the snake eventually left. Did you have any wife, children in the U.S.? Back in the U.S.? Yeah, I had a wife and I had, uh, I had three girls and one boy back in the States. I had four children. How do you keep in contact with your family? Through a mail. We'd write each other. Um, when we go out in the field in Vietnam, we stay out in the field for 30 or 60 days, so I didn't have an opportunity to write. So when I came back in for, uh, for eight to nine days, I write, write, to, write to her. Um, did you develop any close friendships? Yeah, I did. 
I did. I had some soldiers that I got very close to. Uh, my my uh, my radio operator stayed right on me, just like the color of my skin, because wherever I went, he was right there. Because if I needed to help, I turned to him and called for help. And then I had about three or four men in my unit that I could really rely on, and they were they were very. I got close to them. Did you have any moments that were not stress stressful? Oh, <clears throat> in Vietnam, no. Twelve months of stress. Twelve solid months of stress. Even when we were out of the field, we got mortared at night back in our back in the rear of our base camp. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Vietnamese people who were working for us didn't like us, so they would do whatever they could do to try to hurt us. So it was very stressful. You had to stay alert. For 12 months, I had to stay alert over there. Do you have any photos of a Vietnam, Viet experience, Vietnam experience? I did. I had quite a few, but they got misplaced. I don't know where they are now. They lost. I stayed in the military for 30 years. So when I did my 12 months over there on you know, two tours, 24 months, the pictures I took but they didn't stay with me long. You know, I did, moving from one place to another, and I lost them. And right now, do you keep in contact with any combat soldiers you were with? No, not any. Uh, the ones who I was with, uh, they died and got killed. And the ones who, as far as I know, are still living. Mm -hmm. um, we, every now and then, one of them will call me, just one from North Carolina. He called me, and uh, <laughs> when he called me, he called me and said, Hey, Sergeant Major, I'm just calling you to check on to see if you're still breathing. Mm -hmm. And that'll be it. That's it. Um, do you still think about your soldiers? I, cer I certainly do, because there were some good men. I had some good men. Um, I had some not too good, mm -hmm. and I had some that were like children to me, like my sons. Um, what did you do after the war? After the war, when I retired in 1989, um, after the war, I'm jumping ahead. After the war, I came back. We could go to any post that we wanted to go to since we served in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So I had a family back here in Louisiana, and I told them I want to go back to Fort Polk, and they sent me back to Fort Polk. How long did you serve in the military? In, how long did I serve? In the military. In the military? Mm -hmm. 30 years. I stayed in the military for 30 years. Did you enjoy? 30 years and eight days. <laughs> did you enjoy serving your country? I did. I really enjoyed it. There were some moments where I couldn't stand some of the people who I was working with. I didn't like them because I knew their personality was no good, rotten that they were out for what they could get for themselves, but I didn't like that bother me. I did my job, and that's why I got promoted to the rank that I retired with. Um, if you had a chance, would you serve the same way again? No. No, if I had a chance, this time I would do what I started to do in 1960, and that was to apply for Officer's Candidate School at Fort Benning, Georgia. I. I I had it on paper and I threw it away. I didn't go. Did you travel the world after the war? After the war? Mm -hmm. um, wherever Uncle Sam sent me. And so after the war, they sent me to Louisiana, to Illinois, to Germany, um, to California, mm -hmm. and that was it. And each one of those was three to five years I stayed at those places. How many places were you stationed? Oh, I was stationed at uh, Fort Hood, Texas, Fort Dix, New Jersey, Fort Benning, Georgia, Fort Polk, Louisiana. About five, about five army posts I was stationed there. Um, did your family travel with you? My family traveled with me after I got back from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And when I got back from Vietnam, I was able to, to get she and our four kids 
to travel with me, and, and they, they did. I enjoyed it. They wanted me to Kentucky. They wanted me to um, to Illinois. They wanted me to uh, California. Did your servant affect you positively or negatively? My service? Mm -hmm. Not really. Um, I would say positively because I could have become very negative with what the things I saw and how I was treated mm -hmm. in some places by some commanders and some sergeants who worked for me, but I don't like that bother me. So I, I would say that my whole third, my overall 30 years was a, was a positive, uh, a positive tool for me. What did you do? When you got out of the military? When I retired from the military, like I said earlier, then I got a job teaching uh, special ed in elementary schools. And when I, when I applied for it, a college grad from McNeese here and Lake Charles had applied for the same job I was applying for. But the principal <laughs> knew my wife. He worked with my wife together. and. I guess he said, well, I'm going to take a chance on, 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 on this man here. Mm -hmm. So he hired me, and then he was glad he did, because I turned out to be a good, a good teacher. All right, that was the last question. Is there anything you want to add on that I didn't ask in the interview? Um, well, you had a lot of questions that went from 1959 to... to, to uh, to the time I retired and then from my teaching in the 2000s or so. Not really, but I, I enjoyed it. God has, has, has granted me a, a good, fabulous life and my family and allowed me and my wife to stay married together for over 50 years. And, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, thank you for taking your time, for taking the time to do this interview and thank you for your service. You're quite welcome. Retired Commander Sergeant Major Cole. Command Sergeant Major. Command. Yeah, it's absolutely right.